So let's first take a look at local secondary indexes. So uh, it's considered local in that every partition of an LSI is scoped to a base table partition that has the same partition key value. If you're wondering what base table is, that is the initial table that you're creating, uh, that you're creating an index from. The total size of index items for any one partition key value can't exceed 10 gigabytes. So that is definitely a hard limit with local secondary indexes. It shares the same provision throughput setting for read and write activity with the table that is indexing. So that's the base table. And that makes sense because it's a local table. So of course it's going to share. Uh, and then it has a limit of five per table. Now let's take a look at actually how we create a local secondary index. So the LSI is can only be created with the initial table. So here you can see I'm making a table and I'm adding index, index at the time of creation. You cannot add, modify, or delete um, LSIs outside of this initial table step. So you have to really get it right here uh, and now. And if you need one, you literally have to make a new table. So the only way you can uh, make a new LSI, you'd have to make a new table and move your, all your data over. Uh, so you need to have both a partition and a sort key, and there are some conditions around those partition and sort keys. The partition key must be the same as the base table, and this makes sense because it's a local, uh, it's a local partition. So it's working off that base table. Uh, the second sort key should be different from the base table. Now you could make it the same, but then it defeats the whole purpose of having a secondary index, which is supposed to be optimized uh, to sort in a different manner. So you'd want to choose a different sort key in this case. So, you know, hopefully that makes uh, local secondary indexes more clear. So we'll move on to the next one, which is global secondary indexes.